Unfortunately, I have more bad news to bring you today. Another alleged high-profile sexual scandal in the church brought against International House of Prayer in Kansas City and their senior leader, Mike Bickle. I wish I could say this was an isolated incident, but I'm getting calls from all over America from people wanting me to report on high-profile scandals from some of the largest churches and organizations in America. Never in a million years did I think that I would be doing something like this. And I'm just sitting on some of these stories, not really knowing what to do with the information. I even had to retain a lawyer recently. All I can say is this, is that it seems that God is cleaning house and cleaning up the church. He is in the process of bringing all this corruption to light. So if you have these situations going on your church, bring it to light now and do it on your terms before God gets involved and does it on his. Don't wait because God is cleaning house right now. IHOP KC is a ministry dear to my heart. They are a 24 seven house of prayer, which opened up in 1999. They provide worship and, and prayer day and night. I have been there a few times and I listen to them daily to keep me in the spirit of 24 seven prayer and worship, because in these last days, that's what's required to always be mindful of God. So for almost 25 years now, they have been doing 24 seven prayer and worship continually around the clock. They even have four run a church as well as a Bible school. And they boast over 2000 employees. Like for instance, there's a mega church that I'm associated with in my area. They have 60 employees. Okay. So this is a massive, large, one of the biggest Christian organizations in America today. And people come from all over the world to attend their prayer room. This isn't just a thing for the United States. So in, uh, in May, they led a 21 day fast for the nation of Israel and almost a million people joined the call to prayer for intercession for Israel. And I have to say in light of recent events, they were on target prophetically, but we are going to go over what happened. IHOP's announcement on the matter and this was um, released at their forerunner church service this morning. And so we're gonna go over a short clip exactly on them coming forth to present this, as well as I'm gonna read to you the letter that was brought to IHOP's leadership team about the scandal to warn them in the first place. I do know more about the story, a lot more. And I have first in hand information on what's going on. And this affects people that I dearly love. So I'm gonna go about this sensitively but for today, I am only going to stick to the public information that has been released and allow time for other details to emerge. OK, so let's get into the clip that they released this morning in their forerunner church. It's a two minute and 30 second clip. Let's get into it. Been a um, an incredibly difficult week in terms of trying to sort through all the uh, uh, different dynamics that are that are taking place. So I want to read a statement um, that is from our IPKC leadership team, and, as, and, and, and then I want to take a moment and pray, and I'm going to hand it back over to to Isaac. This is a statement from the IPKC leadership team regarding allegations against Mike Bickle. We are heartbroken to share that we recently became aware of serious allegations of sexual immorality directed against Mike Bickle, the founder of IBKC. Our leadership team takes these allegations very seriously, and we are laboring for truth, light, redemption, and righteousness. We are engaging with outside parties to assess and arbitrate these allegations. Our priority is to love and serve the IPKC community during this moment. This news is unsettling for our spiritual family as well as our entire leadership team. Please pray for all involved, including the ones who have come forward, those who have experienced trauma, and for the Bickle family. We are asking for your patience as we work through this complex and very difficult situation. And secondly, we ask our spiritual family to refrain 
from using prophetic spiritual language that can be interpreted as dismissive of the pain of those who are traumatized. On October 26th, the IBKC executive leadership team asked Mike Bickle, and he agreed to not preach or teach from the IBKC platform. attend our 24-hour prayer room, or engage his social media channels while we work with others to assess this situation. As difficult as this is for many, we are trusting Jesus, it's wise and good leadership to help and strengthen us as we anchor our hope in him. So, yeah, that was the st uh, statement from Stuart Greaves, who's one of the senior leaders now leading IOP. And basically, um, you heard that basically they're going to be doing uh, an investigation, which should be done with a third party um, to carry out and to go further into the details to investigate to see if Mike Bickle is guilty of these things, which are very serious offenses. We're going to go into the letter in a second that was released to them. Um, that warned them of these different behaviors from Mike Bickle. But this is very serious. You saw that Stewart was getting all choked up in the process because he had been with Mike Bickle from the beginning. Okay, this started in 1999. So it's a very emotional moment for them. But we're gonna get into the letter right now that gives a lot more details on what exactly happened. Okay, that they didn't release in the video. Okay, let's bring that up right now. Okay, so here you're seeing, now what happened was, is that several people were notified that were executives that were on board with Mike at his team in years past, and they were notified by victims of, that, of Mike's sexual behavior, and they released this letter to the leadership at senior, at the senior leadership at the House of Prayer. So let's get into what this statement says. So public statement concerning recent allegations of Mike Bickle on October 28, 2023. A few days ago, we, the leadership team of the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, were aware of serious allegations spanning several decades concerning its founder, Mike Bickle. Without going into the details to protect the privacy of the victim's identity, we have found that these allegations of clergy sexual abuse by Mike Bickle to be credible and long-standing. The credibility of these allegations is not based on any one experience or any one victim, but the collective and collaborating testimony of the experience for several victims, okay? So it's never really good in a story, this is my commentary at this point, when it is several different people that have come forward. So this just isn't one person or one story. This is several people that are now bringing sexual allegations against Mike. Okay, let's continue. Prior to the meeting with the leadership team of IHOP, we attempted to bring the allegations and the testimony of one of the victims directly to Mike Bickle in the spirit of Matthew 18. However, we were repeatedly rebuffed by Mike Bickle and were refused any sort of meeting. Instead, Mike use manipulation and intimidation tactics towards the victims to isolate them and to discredit them. To avoid further wounding of the victims, we met with several members of IHOP's executive leadership team, and we shared the testimonies of these victims and Mike's inappropriate words and actions. When these alleged allegations were brought to our attention, we were shocked. We could have never imagined that inappropriate conduct with women as something that we would ever need to be concerned about. The allegations seemed to be out of character to the man we thought we knew, but they were so serious that we could not ignore them. The scriptures inform us that leaders in the church, especially those who teach the word of God, are held to a higher standard and stricter judgment. We believe that Mike Bickle's actions were not above reproach, and sure fought of biblical standards for leadership in the church. So to be clear, the allegations made about Mike Bickle's misconduct were sexual in nature and, 
and where the marriage covenant was not honored. Furthermore, the allegations also reveal that Mike Bickle used his position of spiritual authority over the victims to manipulate them. Okay? So we do not share this process to fill in salacious details, but to protecting the integrity of the victims and their experiences that were shared. We appeal to you to refrain from using names of any of the victims. These are women who have always been viewed as credible, trustworthy, and courageous. None of the victims had any intention to punish Mike, and they had nothing to gain by sharing their experiences except the pursuit of truth, repentance, mercy, and grace. So this was signed by three of their executive leaders, Dwayne Roberts, Brian Kim, and Wes Martin. Okay, so you're seeing that this is a, a very serious situation of sexual allegations brought against Mike that went on for decades. They involved several people. Um, and like I said, in time, they might release the names, they might not. I'm, I'm aware of more information, but this is a high profile situation and the people that are involved are high profile leaders there as well. So it's not just Mike, it is uh, other leaders in the church. And this will come to light eventually. Okay, so, yeah, so this is very sad. Um, and you have to really take some of this seriously because the truth is, is like people rarely are ready to take things this far into a situation like this if it wasn't true. But this situation is very serious. And three high-level former executive IHOP signed their name to this, and they have interviewed the victims. It's important to keep the stance that these are alleged issues at this point. Okay, so we must, we must let the process roll out and not jump to conclusions. Um, in cancer culture recently, a lot of times what basically happens is, is people are guilty even before there is an investigation or the process that comes to light. So we don't want to do that here. We don't want to jump to conclusions. The process must play out and we have to be patient. But at first glance, this doesn't look very good. And it seems that these sexual relationships that Mike supposedly had went on for decades. So this wasn't a one-time thing or an isolated situation. These were multiple relationships that were extended that went over for a long time. I'm leaning towards, as I, as I prayerfully consider all this, that this information is most likely true. And I have seen several very sim similar situations like this in my involvement with high profile ministers. But we must be patient for things to be brought to light and in time, God will. So what can we learn from all of this real quick? And what I think are the takeaways that we can do from this? First off, Galatians 6.1 says this, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you might also be tempted. So it's saying don't point the finger at someone and say, look, oh, I can't believe he did that. We all have to make sure to look at our own lives quickly first and not use this as a situation to say that all church leaders are corrupt. There are good leaders. There are good church leaders. I certainly have a wonderful pastor. And he's not perfect, but he's a wonderful man. Gandhi once said this. They asked him about Hitler during the war. And he said, listen, the only devils I'm worried about are the ones running around in my own heart. Okay, so we have to be primarily concerned with our own sin. Jesus compared the issue to Matthew to eye surgery. When he said, don't take the plank out of your brother's own eye before taking the splinter out of your brother's eye. In other words, eye surgery has to be done with great care and gentleness because the eye is a very sensitive organ. So in dealing with this situation with others, we want to be sensitive and we want to try to give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Second thing, and just a few more comments, and I'm going to close the video. Number two, the church has had several high-profile scandals in recent years. Hillsong Church in Australia, which is the largest charismatic church in the world, um, saw their senior leader ouched and brought into court um, for his father's sexual allegations. We had um, Hillsong New York City with Carl Lentz, and he was ouched, and that church of 8,000 people basically dis disappeared into thin air. and 
You know, that was personal to me because I'm here in New York City. We had the Maverick City worship team situation where, you know, all sorts of things was going on, drinking and, you know, clubbing and partying with the worship team. We had Bill Heibel's church, Mark Driscoll, and the list goes on and on and on. And uh, we're always going to have these scandals in the church. Let me just bring up something real quick that is just so important to me that I want to share with you guys. And it's just, just this concept of this ministry that I've worked with in the past, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. And they use the concept of the of the iceberg, okay? So after Hillsong Church collapsed, they came to this organization to help get restoration and get healthy again. And basically, this is the concept of the iceberg. And the modern day church really is really f is like uh, is like the iceberg. OK, only 10 percent of the iceberg lies visibly above the surface. So that's church activity, worship services. But 90 percent of it lies beneath the surface. And modern day church services really only deal with the surface level that we can see the top 10 percent. And so we have a church culture that's not really going deep, that's not really transforming people at deeper lives. And the larger and larger churches get, the more quality goes out the window. For me, I grew up in a church that was probably around 300 people, and it was just a perfect, perfect um, church size because you, you could really know the pastor, everybody knew each other, so there could be real accountability. But today in the system of larger churches, and there are some good large churches out there, I must say that. But the problem is, is that a lot of the church culture is shallow and it's not really address addressing the deeper issues. That's part of the reason why I'm involved with inner healing and deliverance and emotionally healthy spirituality, because I want to go deeper into things. So there's a lot that we can learn here, but I just want to end the video with some hope because I feel like I have a prophetic word for IHOP if they might be watching and to other people that are following them and wondering what's next, right? Like I said, I know a lot of people that are involved in this situation and this is personal to me. So basically, I really want to leave people with some hope, okay? And I was involved in a high profile scandal and when I was in seminary at Oral Roberts University and serious accusations were brought against Oral Roberts' son who was running the college at that point and it bankrupt the college. I lost my scholarship. It really affected me and hurt me and thousands of people on a deep level. But the university did come out on the other side and IHOP will come out of this. So I want to leave you some hope. I feel like it's a really good ministry that will continue but it obviously will not be what it was. So I have a prophetic insight that I'd like to like to release. A few weeks ago, while I'm watching IHOP, because Mike Bickle is one of the best teachers on the end times, and God can still use people if they're involved in sinful situations, although at this point it's alleged. But God can still use people because the Bible says the gifts and callings of God without repentance. Karl Barth was one of the greatest theologians in in modern times but however had a 20-year relationship with a mistress so god can continue to keep using people and having their gifts in operation even if they're not living right so the lord began to show me a couple of weeks ago isaac bennett one of the leaders at forerunner church who's the lead pastor there and i'm seeing him and the lord saying this is the next leader of ihop church and i'm like ihop organization and i'm saying to myself wait a minute Mike Bickle's there, and he's got another 20 years in ministry at least. Well, why are you showing me this? But the Lord kept showing me again and again, this is the David. This is the man that will lead this organization because he has, he has the heart of God. I watch his preaching very often, and it just really impresses me as someone sensitive to God and the Holy Spirit. And I believe that he will eventually take over and lead this organization to a new era. Like I said, he has a heart after God. He has the talent and gifting. And I believe that he also has the calling to be the next senior leader of IHOP and lead them into a new era. God uses these situations. He turns our messes into a message and he uses these situations. He doesn't waste anything to spin it into something that can be used for his glory. As it says in Romans 8, 28, that God uses all things for the good of those who love him. And that God is still has a plan for IHOP. He's still moving in IHOP, but this looks very serious. 
I'll possibly cover this topic again when more information becomes available. But lastly, I want to challenge you to first off to keep the victims in prayer, the, vic the female victims that are involved in this and it was sexual in nature. So pray for their healing. Pray that God, that God would heal them and continue to minister to them. And secondly, that pray for the whole IHOP leadership team, that God would give them the wisdom of Solomon. Really, in these tricky times, we don't just need wisdom. We need razor sharp wisdom to know how to navigate the times that are ahead. And the regular church leaders that were able to lead in past will not be able to lead in these times because they're getting challenging and their birth pains are increasing. And so anybody that is not on point and sharp will not be able to lead in these times. It takes special leadership to lead. And so let's pray that God would give the leadership team the wisdom of Solomon to know how to navigate this situation and what to do. I'm just thanking you for watching the video. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. I'll do my best to respond to comments. Share the video if you really like it and hit the thumbs up because this will help to get the message out to more people. Be blessed. Amen.